Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Montana Made. Uh, today is a part two video of how to build a concrete countertop. Uh, we'll start out the video by reviewing the material that you're going to need uh, to pour your con concrete countertop. Uh, the first video is obviously how to build the mold. You guys can catch that on uh, my previous videos if you subscribe. Uh, always appreciate that and the likes. Uh, and the questions have been great so far. Uh, so anyways, what we'll do guys is I will start to uh, talk about the material you're going to need and we'll go through pouring concrete in this video and why you would do uh, specific methods for pouring concrete uh, to get it to cure properly for your countertop. So let's get started and we'll start working through those processes. So before we do our material tutorial, um, the biggest thing is obviously having the correct amount of material and the way you do that, uh, easiest way is just get on Google and search um, concrete volume calculator and what it'll ask you is your you know length of your mold times your width uh, times your depth to get your actual volume of concrete uh, by bag size. So with this one, I uh, did my calculations and I know that one 80 pound bag will be more than enough for this mold. Uh, I would highly recommend that if you guys are doing this for your first time, buy a second, you know, buy a second or third bag, one over what, what the calculator is telling you just in case you get pouring and you run short. Uh, that's not a good thing, <laughs> but you can always return a bag. So um, anyways, we'll move on to the uh, material tutorial. So the material that you're going to need to pour your concrete countertop is obviously uh, the mold from video one that we had built uh, for your application, whether it's this flip over mold that I built to use up my remaining concrete for this video or a uh, pour in place mold as well, which also in that first video describes how to, how to do a pour in place mold. Um, some sort of wire mesh. Um, and also some sort of uh, rebar. I had some extra all thread laying around, but this is the same thing as my 3 8 inch rebar, which I recommend. Um, and what you'll do is set that in the middle of your concrete pour to stiffen up the whole, the whole slab and make it as strong as possible. Uh, what else we're going to work with is, and I'll put links to all this stuff, what it is, uh, is cement color. And so what we're doing is a charcoal color, just so you guys at the end can see the finish and how this comes out. Um, it's just an additive you pour uh, into your concrete mix that gives it, you know, color. And it looks matte like that <laughs> when you initially pour it, but immediately, you know, when you start grinding it down is kind of when you uh, reveal, you know, the nice looking texture, the aggregate that's inside of the concrete. So again, that'll be on video three. So if you guys are still looking at this, uh, right now, if there's not a video three uploaded, there might be. But again, if you subscribe, uh, you'll see those as they come up. Um, <laughs> the obvious thing you're going to need um, is your concrete mix. And I always just go with Quickcrete. Uh, they make all sorts of different, you know, speed cure, all sorts of uh, variety of different concretes that you can use. Uh, I try to buy stuff at Lowe's just so if you guys are watching these videos, you can... Uh, go to the easy places and get the exact same stuff that I'm getting. Uh, there's no, you know, magical place that uh, you guys have never heard about that this material comes from. Uh, it's a <laughs> 4,000 PSI mix, which is perfect for any uh, concrete countertop. Uh, they also make a 5,000 PSI, which has uh, basically just fiber mesh or a little, uh, you know, just fibers in the mix. It'll also stiffen it up as well. Um, <laughs> I get, you know, for these flip over molds, I have a dolly just so I can roll it around as it gets heavy. If I need to move it into somewhere that's hotter or cooler, I can do that just by pushing around. It uh, makes life pretty easy on the back. Um, I got a bucket with my mix in it already just to mix the concrete up and pour it out. And what else do we need? <laughs> that is basically it for this. You'll need a tarp once that you know you got your mix in there and a screed. So we'll have our screed board, which is just generally a two by four, to even out the top of this. And I'll show you guys how that works too when I'm pouring this uh, concrete into this mold. So let's work towards that, um, and I will. I guess I'll, I'll show you how to pour concrete. Okay, so now we're going to get to mixing up our concrete uh, for our countertop. 
And what I've done is, you know, like anybody, just find some sort of container that will hold all of your material so you can mix it up easily in it. I chose this five gallon bucket because I only have a single uh, bag of 80 pound mix. Um, I also have, what I showed you guys earlier, this liquid cement color. Again, you can buy this at Lowe's is where I, where I purchased this. I think Home Depot has something similar, but I've had really good luck with this. Again, charcoal color. And throughout this, we'll show you how that turns out. Uh, so now that you've got uh, your cement mix um, in your bucket, <laughs> ready to mix up, having a hard time thinking. Um, the first thing that I do is take my color mix. So one bottle will do two 80 pound bags. So I'm gonna approximately you know, pour in um, about half, because obviously this is a single bag of 80 pound mix. And you know, if you want it darker or lighter, obviously add more of this stuff. And I do that on the very top so that uh, it's, you know, when I first get my water, uh, it starts to dilute that material uh, and mix it in right out of the gates. You're not trying to mix it in uh, midstream, so it seems to give me a little more uniform color throughout my whole mixing process. Uh, and again, you guys have probably seen somebody mix up concrete. So I will do that and I'll come back as soon as it's all mixed up and show you the consistency um, that I have. So I'll get that mixed up and get back to you. Okay, we are officially mixed. I don't recommend doing it in a five gallon bucket. This is honestly the first time I, I tried doing it in a bucket and it is, uh, it's a lot harder than it, it seems like it should have been. <laughs> but we got it done. Um, to show you the guys the consistency that I prefer, everybody says oatmeal and you know, you never really get a good look at uh, the slurry that you create. Um, it's, it's a pretty, you know, wet consistency enough so that it'll flow um, easily into each like nook and cranny of your mold um, and if you want a little bit wetter that's fine too if you get it too dry you'll start to get air pockets uh, like on my first video I show you that tabletop that I made and it has a, a ton of air pockets in it uh, and I did it that way because you know for the look that I was going for for the table but also so if you do a dry mix where <laughs> it doesn't you know, it doesn't appear to have any kind of uh, moisture content to it to speak of. You know, there's obviously no dry spots, but it doesn't flow easily like this. Uh, you'll get those rock pockets. Uh, you'll still get them with this, and I'll show you how to, you know, throughout your mold, get rid of those. Uh, so we will move right into uh, pouring this concrete into the mold. Okay, so we have our mold set up. Uh, it is clean. Uh, all the silicone is in every joint. Uh, again, go around the outside of the mold and make sure it's level because you want a level table, you want a level countertop, uh, and a lot of it depends on how you set this mold up. Make sure all of your dimensions are correct. Uh, and we'll go ahead and pour some slurry in there. And so out of the gates, uh, I want to fill this half full, and then we'll put our 3 8 inch rebar in there to you know stiffen up midway through the mold and then we'll finish it off uh, by pouring the rest of concrete in there so we'll go ahead and get that done so I prefer putting in you know the first layer by hand and just putting basically a thin layer just enough to cover the bottom of the mold and what this does is allows you to work every single uh, piece of this aggregate into all the little nooks and crannies and corners by hand. And as you can see, gets in there pretty easily because those are the, really the hard spots to get to. Uh, you vibrate the concrete obviously uh, towards the end to get the get all the air bubbles out, and that'll help you know get everything into the nooks and crannies as well. But doing this by hand. I'm just going around the outside of it and making it nice and uniform. You can get that done pretty easy and make sure that you uh, get each of those areas filled. And by pushing on those repetitively, it draws moisture into those areas so it'll also flow any kind of, you know, the smaller aggregate and fill those spaces throughout, you know, throughout this whole mold. So I always kind of, I mean, go around and push so as you can see here if you do this on the end see how it fills up with water it does the same thing 
in the mold as well. So that's why I always do a good job going around the edges. Just so I can put as much moisture into those areas as possible, especially the corners. Uh, next thing we do, while it's still wet, take our rebar and our wire mesh. Um, I recommend, I've, I've got about a quarter of an inch gap from mesh and rebar to edge of mold. Um, I usually try and stick about a half an inch. Uh, seems to be a, a good strength for this. Um, so once you have that set, just kind of push it in to the mold about midway up. And then I finish by putting my final coat of concrete into the mixture, into the mixture, into the mold. <laughs> and uh, same thing with the second half. Just come along and make sure every single void is full. And it's just working that material into your mold and filling every single nook and cranny possible. And trying to get it as level as possible at the top. And you start floating this material. So that it starts to get really, see how it, as you push it, it starts filling with water. You want to do that around the outsides too as well. To get all that moisture on the edge of the table and all the really, really tough nooks and crannies to get to. That otherwise, you know, if you just let this cure right now, you'd have all sorts of air bubbles uh, that you'd have to come and backfill with a different slurry and it wouldn't, it wouldn't look correct on the finished product. So, see how that, that floats. So we're, we're getting pretty uniform. Just about to run out of material. So at this point, also if you wanted to, uh, obviously you always have to screed your concrete so you come across. push off all that material that you don't want in there. So see how it's nice and even? Uh, you can hard trowel it at this point. If you just wanted to, you know, if it was a pour in place, what you want to do is you take a concrete trowel and float this, uh, and it would make it nice and smooth and even, so your finished product would already be uh, really perfectly ready to sand. Okay, uh, now we are ready to vibrate this concrete. Like I was talking about, we want to get every single air bubble out of this. A uh, little slab as possible if you want a nice smooth finish um, and you can see there's already bubbles working themselves out so like right there's one just popped um, so it's obviously you're mixing concrete water you're gonna get air in between all the aggregate and everything so uh, it's our duty in the order of making good slabs to get that out and I'll show you just a couple you know quick variety of ways to get this out uh, so if you have a raised slab like we do here on our piano dolly um, you can do anything from shaking it, I mean bubbles already just start pouring out of this slab. Uh, you can come through with your rubber mallet, start tapping as well, and all you want to do is you want to go around the whole slab, I mean look at everything that shows up. So you can imagine if you didn't get those out of there, uh, each one of those is a little void uh, in your slab, and a lot of those sit at the very bottom, so we're working those. Uh, from the bottom up obviously because air goes up <laughs> pretty basic uh, But yeah, you just continue to go around tapping tapping underneath uh, Throughout this whole slab and I just want to show you a little trick as well if you got a sander Make sure you turn it on and there's no dust in it But you come back and you hold that sander uh, right against your frame You know, you're letting the machine do all the work for you. So, I mean, you can just see how many bubbles pop out when you do that. And you just work that sander all the way around, basically until you stop seeing bubbles. Uh, so, what I'll do is I'll continue to go around and do this. At the end of this, uh, this, 
keep saying this. Um, at the end of your pour, uh, you're happy with all the bubbles out, everything's tapped out, uh, you've screeded this level, you want to cover this with a tarp and let it sit for a good two to three days. Uh, so I'm going to get all these bubbles out and then I will, uh, <laughs> I'll be back to you guys in about two to three days to show you the next steps of how to, uh, you know, take this mold off, uh, prep the slab for sanding, and then we'll also go through sanding. So again, uh, subscribe, like, and then you guys will get to, you know, you obviously get the notification when all this stuff pops up and, uh, I hope you're enjoying and your continued interest in this is still there and, uh, anyways, hope you learned something, uh, and I will uh, I'll look forward to getting back to you guys in about two or three days. Okay, now I know I said I'd be back in two or three days, but let's make it five minutes. Uh, since I left out one very important step, uh, I told you to cover it with a tarp, and you do. We got our tarp, and so we got to cover that for the next few days, and I just lay it right over there. Uh, and since you know that's going to be the bottom of it, I really don't care if it's if it's touching the concrete. There should be a little bit, you know, tented up a little bit so that moisture can evaporate. So we got our tent going on, but so we do that because uh, we want a, an even cure on this uh, on this slab. So what that does is it keeps the moisture in. Uh, while slowly letting it evaporate out of the slab. So hopefully in two or three days, most of the moisture is out. Uh, we'll test it to see if it is, and if it is, uh, we'll get to work on how to, like I said, pop the mold off and then get to sanding, the, get, get into the fun stuff where you get to actually sand the block and see how it's going to look uh, and the cool stuff. So again, for the second or third time, I will see you guys in two or three days.